Welcome to the 12th lecture of Advanced Calculus course. In this lecture, we will learn about the continuity of differentiable functions. For a function to be differentiable from our last lecture, we know that a differentiation is a process that we calculate a slope of a tangent line in a given point, at a given point. So, for a function to be differentiable, its slope of the secant lines, let's say this point is a and this point is x, as x approaches to a, the, slope of the, the slopes of the secant lines should approach a certain, certain given slope. The slope of the tangent line at a. So for that to happen, the function must be continuous. So for example, a function like this would not have a, uh, uh, would not be differentiable because, because the secant, uh, because the slopes of the secant line approach approach the slope of the tangent line at this point a virtual tangent line because the function values uh, uh, the function value is actually not in that point so for a function to be differentiable this the slopes of the secant line should be uh, should approach the slope of this given tangent line however in fact the slope of the uh, secant lines do not approach such lines. So, therefore, a function like this would not be differentiable. Uh, e, uh, however, a continuous function could be different. Uh, uh, could not be differentiable. For example, a function like the absolute value function. This function is continuous at zero. However, it is not differentiable at zero because the, the slopes of the secant lines as it approaches zero is negative one is negative one in this side and positive one in the right side. So therefore in this case there's no there's no uh, limit of these slopes and therefore it is not differentiable although it is continuous. So what we know is that a differentiable function, if a function f is differentiable at a, it is continuous at a. However, not the other way. Now, what we want to prove in this lecture is this part. We want to show that a differentiable function is always continuous. So, how do we prove this? Now, first, let's assume that a function f is differentiable mm -hmm. at a. What we need to show is that a function is then continuous at a. Now remember the epsilon delta definition of continuity. To show that a function f is continuous at a, what we need to show is that for any given a positive epsilon, there exists a corresponding positive value delta such that the fact that a point x in the domain of domain of the given function is close to the point we're uh, discussing a by a distance less than delta the fact guarantees that the function value f of x approaches f of a by a distance less than epsilon so we need to find such delta so If we could find such a delta for a 
given epsilon, then we could sh uh, then we are proving that uh, we're proving that the function f is continuous at a by the epsilon delta definition of continuity. And because we know that f is differentiable at a, what we know is that for any given epsilon, there exists a corresponding delta. Let's use a different uh, different notation. Let's say delta star. Uh, there's corresponding delta star such that Uh, for a x uh, in the domain of function f, if this fact guarantees that the slope of the secant lines approach a certain value. Let's say f prime of a by distance less than epsilon. So we we know this fact. And from this fact, we want to derive the fact about, con uh, fact about continuity. And how do we do that? Now, let's look at the statement about differentiability of f. Now, uh, since 1 is also a positive number, 1 could be an, a certain given epsilon for the differentiability of f. What that means is that for 1, there exists a corresponding delta, delta star, such that, such that the fact that x minus in the distance between x and a is less than delta star guarantees the fact that the slope of the secant lines secant lines are close to the limit by a distance less than 1 so we uh, we could find such a delta because f is differentiable at a and now using the triangle inequality we know the fact that this value this uh, this value is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the slope of the secant lines minus the given limit. This is from the triangle inequality. So now then we could move this term to the other side of the inequality. So we could use, we could say that f of x minus f of a minus x minus a is less than 1 plus the absolute value of f prime of a. Now, because we need to, uh, we want to show that f is continuous, we want to extract this part, this part of the left side of the inequality, and we could do that by multiplying the absolute va value of x X, uh, x minus a in both sides, uh, like this. Then we get that we get f of x minus f of a is less than x minus a plus uh, x minus a well let me just use uh, use this common term as like this uh, 1 plus f prime of a and we want to find a delta such that this value is less than epsilon so that f of x minus f, the absolute value of f of x minus f of a could be less than epsilon. And then, now the convenient part about delta, the epsilon delta definition, convenient part about delta is that you could define delta as any value you want. You could define it as small as you want it to be. So, 
what we want to do is to uh, make this value less than epsilon. And so, what we need to do is that we want to, uh, we just want to make x minus a one this value to be less than epsilon, meaning that we want this to be less than this value. And we could define delta as any value we want, so we could just make delta smaller than this value. And we could do that by defining delta as the minimum of delta star. Uh, let me label this delta star 1 because it is a corresponding delta star to epsilon equals 1. So delta star 1 and epsilon over 1 plus the absolute value of f prime of a. So if we define delta like this, and then the fact that x minus a is less than delta will guarantee the fact that x minus a is less than delta star 1 and x minus a is less than epsilon over 1 plus absolute value of f prime of a. And that will lead us to the fact that this value is less than epsilon. So, since, x, uh, since the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, it is less than delta star 1, and therefore, this relationship would hold for this delta. And then, the, uh, and then using the triangle inequality, that will lead us to this inequality. And this relationship will also hold because delta is less than epsilon over 1 plus epsilon value of f prime of a. Therefore, defining this delta, we obtain the fact that if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, the absolute value of f of x minus f of a is less than delta. So we have, find, we have found the delta we want for any given epsilon. And therefore, the proof is over. We have shown that a function differentiable at a certain point is always continuous at that point as well. This is the end of the 12th lecture of Advanced Calculus course. In the, ne in the next lecture, we'll learn about the uh, differentiability of composite functions. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.